right. Welcome, everybody, Ready? to Catfish Weekly, along with Josh and Ch I'm sorry, Chad. I bloated, didn't I? <laughs> I don't I still bloated. feel you didn't hit the go live button, goofball. Well, it's sitting oh, in the broadcast, and I ain't going to hit it. I can if you want to restart it. Oh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Catfish Weekly. I am Chad, along with Josh and Lyle. We have no idea what Lyle's doing. He's been wandering all around, and he just comes and starts doing whatever Lyle does. Because you know what? I'm it's excited Chad. about tonight's Chad. guest. I can't help myself. Well, I'm pretty excited, too. It's a really good guest. Yes, it is. And hopefully, so. hopefully they can teach us a thing or two about making our fish look Bigger and us look prettier. Because let's face it, use, right? maybe, maybe we can get halfway there. Maybe the images I have to make thumbnails with with you guys are very limited, <laughs> and it takes a lot of airbrushing to make you guys look pretty. So, we'll see how that happens. Plumbers crack catfishing is trending. What? Well, <laughs> That's I'm not sure that they had those people in chat that have made it in so far. <laughs> well, oh, let's see if we, we got Matt from Wannabe Outdoors, Joe Buck 66, <laughs> member Pontoon Jody Catfish, and Mike Sampson, Avid Fisherman, Dave Funk, 922 Crappie Barbecue, <clears throat> member Brian B. Catfishing, <laughs> Lance McCoo Guy, the Hawaiian Fisherman. Member Fishing and Freedom and member Creole Catfishing. Creole. Member Danny Stone Outdoors. Sherman Tomlinson. Hooks and Hammocks. Fishing with Jeff Beal. Plumbers Crack Catfishing. I almost got a good, I almost had to look that up later. There's got to be something behind that. There's definitely something Thank behind you, Chris it. And Tilly. Thank you, Chris and Telly. Thank you so much. Great guest we had last week. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. I mean, I only bring in the big talent, Lyle. I think this week was also my suggestion, just in case it's a good show. <laughs> Catfishing Fresno, what's going on? KMB Anglers, Cindy Stokes, LG Bass. Big Wrench Catfishing, what's going on, buddy? Troy from Real and Virtual Outdoors, River Rat 3030. PB Catfishing. What's up, Paul? Hawk Catfishing. Size Matters. Joe Newman. 205 Wild Action. Uh, I get Dale Hayslip, if not, hey, Dale Hayslip. <laughs> JNS Outdoors. And I am to the bottom. To the bottom. There you go. Sweet. Real quick, Lyle, I've got the uh, tournament results pulled up if you want me to go through those real quick. That sounds like a plan to me. All right. We've got out of the Indiana Catfish Association out of Angel Mounds, we've got the top five here. And coming in fifth place, we've got Terry Yoder with Marvin and Adam Nepp at 62.95. In fourth place, James Halcom and Charles Breedlove at 66.82. In third place, Andy Williams Delmar and Justin Arthur at 72.53. In second place, James Nepp and Anthony R at 77.33. And in first place, Corey Peterson and Travis Yost with 937 and the big fish of 30.28. Nice. It's a pretty good way. Very nice. Wait, coming out of Angel Mounds. Wait. Have you noticed that my buddy Chuck Breedlove most of the time is in the money? <laughs> yep, I have. Chuck, he's a fishing machine. I'm not kidding you. Been for a long time. Yep, he's definitely lucky I've not been fishing in any of these tournaments lately because. He may have been in sixth place instead of fifth. Wow. Uh, he's, he's got it going on. I see your lovely wife, Dee, has made it in the chat. There's Rod Wise. Well, hello, beautiful wife, Dee. 
you better be nice to her. She wouldn't got your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I thought I was going to be stuck just eating these peanut butter Oreos the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you got a good wife, you got to keep them around. That's exactly right. That's that true. Is exactly right. So, there's Freddie. There's for Freddie's Outdoor Adventures. He'll be a guest tonight on Catfish and Crappie at, right after us. That's what I understand. But yeah. I think you've got everybody else. I, I think we've got yeah. pretty much everybody, but. I think so. Man, uh, well, before we get going too much and bring our guests in here, I'm going to be telling my boat this week. Hadn't been going for a while. We've had the whole floor out of it, replaced all the foam in the bottom of it, done some rewiring. It's time to get on the water. I'm ready to go. I'm tired of working on it. Yep. Tired of working on it. Time to fish. So that's going to be happening really, really quick. Excited about that. I got a question for you. Lay it on me. You've done a huge process pulling all this Mm-hmm. old foam out and redoing it and now you're getting your live well and your everything straightened back up did you take lots of pictures and video i started to and it, i was in wanting to get it done so bad i finally just dealt with it and quit doing good video sometimes sometimes you have to draw the line chad because there, there's you can get a project done or you can film a video telling how to pe- telling people how to do it Sometimes it's just some of the things out. that I said when I was working it, trying to get that insulation out there. I don't think anybody wanted to hear. Just Mil- you just lost millions of views. Yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes because, because you got in a hurry. But you know what? I've I got somebody that, for the next time that you do this, I've got somebody that can tell you how to take better photos and video. So next time, Lyle, you can do this. You can have all the cameras set up while you do this, and then you can make the I need video. A video. Then we can even mic it. We ought to even mic him up, and then we might even learn some new words. Would Would you That's like me idea. to send you what I done so you can listen to it? I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, pretty sure you wouldn't let me put it out there. Kind sure of be, that insulation sure would be heavily edited. Yeah, that insulation is really, really hard to get out because in that boat it's sectioned off into sections and it's poured in and it you know expands yeah, and gets in everything and you've got to cut it out and it's a terrible pain in the ass to do. But you know, when it's as full of water as I was, you've got to do it at some point. You just have to. so it's yeah, about it's, done. I'm really glad. So, been watching a bunch of good videos. JNS had a great video out this week, and uh, Whisker Pig Fishing's got a great one out come out today. So, if you guys haven't checked them out, be sure to do it. Oh, and KB Anglers had one where uh, Kevin admitted that his wife beat him at a tournament, which I kind of <laughs> sent a message and told him that she did, you know, because I knew yeah, she did. <laughs> I, I, I've been a little bit behind. I have unread text messages from Mr. K and B. He probably thinks I've decided him or something, but I just haven't haven't been able to reply or check out the videos lately. So, hey, there's Betty there. Jean listening on her way home from work. Hello, my sister. What do you say when you bring our guest in? For <laughs> yeah, maybe what? Huh? Bye. You Somebody's telling you you need to hurry up. Hey, I think so too. Can we bring it? Oh, look. Hi, Christina. Hi. Our esteemed you? guest. Hi, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> you say hi to mama. You know, um, one of the things about taking pictures in your boat or any other time, if you're ever going to put them online or edit them, is when you hold your phone up, don't hold it like this. Be a man, turn it sideways where you can get a photograph that you can edit. This is for little girls and TikTok. This is for people <laughs> that care about what they do right there. You just triggered Jerry Parker, just so you I know. I don't care if I did. It's, you, you can't, uh, the ones that are up like, you can't edit them 
If you mm-hmm. want to use it for a thumbnail, it's nearly impossible. Well, you, you have to think about the purpose of your photo. That yeah, is let's, the biggest, let's, biggest let's point the, there. I, yeah, let's let the professional tell us how this is done. Now, let, <laughs> let, everybody that's listened up to this point, d- just stop for us. Those that don't know, for those that don't know, Josh, why don't you tell a little bit about what Christina does? Well, guys, uh, she does a little bit of everything, but... Uh, she has done for, uh, professional photography since before we met each other. Uh, probably the better part of 20 years now. And, uh, you know, and that and has done a little bit of everything. Real estate photography, uh, family photography, all that good stuff. So I, I'm waiting she to see how well you pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she knows what she's doing and she can... Tell people how to make their their photographs better, and and we would like to ask that people would hold the comment their questions to the end. But I, I know sometimes it that doesn't happen, and we'll work with that the best we can. But if you if you're doing videos, a lot of what Christine is going to tell us tonight can apply to videos as well as photography, right, Christina? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Just a little bit of the technique is different. Because Josh will tell you, I am not a videographer. <laughs> no, I, I have a skill set. Video is not it. <laughs> but I am working uh, on expanding that. <laughs> I understand. Well, you know, we we told you before the show that what we'd like to do was do with you as we do with Ted, and just turn it turn you loose, and let you do a seminar on Catfish Weekly. If you're ready, we're going to do that right now. Bring it. All right, kid. We'll be right here waiting on you. Yep. All right. So, uh, hi, guys. I'm Christina Dunnigan. You guys know me probably better as Mrs. The Weekend Angler. (laughs) But, ah, Mm. look at all of our lovely little hosts. You forgot they're on screen. <laughs> I bet you. There we go. So um, we are going to do a little bit of fish photography 101. I'm going to start with the basics here and um, try to not talk too techy because I know not everyone's going to understand the lingo of my industry, but I'm going to do the best I can to answer everyone's questions and um, hopefully y'all learned a thing or two. So, okay. Let me do, do, do. Oh. All right. Here we go. So, a little bit about me. Yes, my husband is correct. I have been doing photography probably the better part of 20 years. I uh, photograph maternity, seniors, um, engagements, weddings, babies, real estate, food. I've dabbled in a little bit of everything. Um, probably the... Uh, genre I'm most drawn to and love the most is boudoir, but hey, that's not family friendly for tonight. So sorry if you were maybe hoping to see anything, not happening. <laughs> All right. Oop. Okay, apparently I can't be on that screen. So oh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm working with multiple screens here and it's not <laughs> working with me. <laughs> sorry guys. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna say about the technical stuff. So anytime you have um, a picture, it is a combination of things working together. You have aperture, which is how big your lens opens to allow light in, shutter speed, how fast that lens opens and closes, and ISO is how sensitive it is to light. All those together make a really good picture. That's all I'm gonna say on the techie stuff because that's a lot of math and it's a little bit on the boring side, but it, it does come in handy when you're trying to troubleshoot stuff. So keep that in mind. All right. Get on the right screen here. All right. So one of the things that traditionally makes a really good and interesting photo is what we call the rule of thirds. If you look at these photos here, is that everything is set up into 
thirds. And you can see that like, if you look at this, how everything is kind of on these photos is lined up into one third or even a tiny corner is where the subjects or the where your eye should be drawn to. When we're doing fishing pictures, we ain't got to worry about all the artsy stuff. It's great, yes, if you're doing competition portraiture, but if you're just going out with the family and trying to get a good picture of the catch of a lifetime, a new PB, you ain't got to worry about all this stuff. So the different types of cameras. The one almost all of us have with us all the time is going to be your cell phone. I, I probably take cell phone pictures 90% of the time just because it's what I have with me. I am not going to walk around with this battle boy. It is heavy. And while, yes, it takes the better pictures, it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to carry around all the time. So I'm going to be using my cell phone. Um, if you're old school, you may have a point and shoot lying around. Uh, this is one that I use for vacations because I don't want to take the big camera with me, uh, depending on what location I am, am going to. So I'm going to try to address how to do things with any of the cameras. So if you have questions about your camera, feel free to email me later. I'll give you my contact information. But for the purposes of tonight, I'm mainly going to talk about stuff with cell phone photography and verging into the point and shoot kind of cameras. All right. So you got to think about what you need to take with you. You got to have a light source. For most of us, we're fishing outdoors, so we're going to have the sun, unless you're doing night fishing. If you're doing night fishing, you're not going to have that. And the moon, while it technically is a light source, it doesn't put off a lot of light. So you're going to need to have either a flash or you're going to want to have some kind of a constant light. And you can use, um, I, I've used the like light bar type things from Harbor Freight before. Um, I'm using a ring light right now to do this um, live. Um, let's see, this thing was like $15 on Amazon and it's really, really bright. It's really compact and it travels well. You've got to think about, okay, if we have those light, we have our cameras, we need power sources. We need batteries. We need ways to charge them. Do you need a power bank? Um, do you need the extra cables so that you can plug things in? Um, I know whenever we're doing like the live tournaments on Josh's boat, we have a couple of 12 volt outlets on there. So we're plugging in, you know, like the car chargers just so we can keep everything charged up and topped off. If you're going to be out on the water, I highly, highly suggest having some kind of flotation or tether for your gear. Um, Chad, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you don't want to have to go fishing your phone out of the lake. That's a very expensive mistake. Um, your, your husband did that too. Yes, yes, I was just about to say that. He um, donated a GoPro to the Tennessee River. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've learned that expensive lesson. Uh, this is optional, but I suggested gimbal because it will help keep everything level and even. And if you're on a boat, you know how things do this. So it helps, but it's not a requirement. And a tripod is not a bad idea, especially if you were by yourself. Because taking selfies with a fish is a little bit difficult. I'm sure you guys can probably agree to that. <laughs> All right. Do the next thing. Okay. Another good idea to do, especially if you're using your phone, is get a waterproof case. Check that it says waterproof, not water resistant. Um, this case is pretty good. However, it's not waterproof. And you can see, like right here on the thing, it's already... The seal is already like 
trying to come undone. So I could easily get water into these ports if I were to accidentally drop it. Um, Josh likes the Otterbox Defender series cases. Those ones are really good. This one here is um, that you see on the screens. Amazon's like just under $20. And that one's specific to my model of phone. But they make them for just about every model of phone. A little more expensive. Um, but for the peace of mind, you get definitely something to look into. You could also go this route and get one of the phone pouch bags. I think my Walmart has them for like $5. And I'm pretty sure I've seen them on Timu and, and other like cheap discount sites. So those are pretty universal. Um, you should be able to find one that will fit your phone or even a um, small digital camera. I guarantee this little camera would fit in there if I wanted it to. Um, I don't need to because that's actually a waterproof camera, but definitely consider waterproofing. If you're doing video and GoPros do photos as well, but GoPros, some models of GoPros are waterproof, some are water resistant, and they need an additional case. So like you can see here in this one, uh, the photo on the right, it that one that model had to have an extra case. Um, I am not an expert on GoPros. I'm not going to claim to be. So I don't know which models need the extra waterproofing. Um, but that's something that you can easily Google or you would know for the model that you have. And if you actually have a DSLR like I have here, they make um, waterproof housings for those as well. But they're really expensive. <laughs> Okay, one. Uh, this is my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt, but one of the things I think is the absolute most important when you're taking a good photograph is focus. You can have the catch of a lifetime and be taking that picture, and if it is blurry, it just, like, rips your, your heart out. Um... I know that I have looked at the little viewfinder on my camera before only to get back to my house and put the card in my computer and find out it's out of focus. It, it's, it's like soul crushing when it's a picture you really, really wanted. So um, now that is just my opinion, but if you don't lose the picture of a lifetime to bad focus, take extras, take another shot because surely one of them is going to be a good one. All right. So when you're taking pictures of people and I realize we're, we're, we're concentrating on the fish here, but this applies to, to the fish too. Whenever you're doing pictures of people or anything living, focus on the eyes. You want the eyes to be, what draws you in because that's kind of like, uh, oh, what is that saying that the like, like eyes are the gateway to the soul or something. I'm trying here, <laughs> but focus on those eyes. Uh, if your eyes are in focus, it is going to draw your viewer in. They're going to want to look at that picture and look at that picture longer uh, another thing to consider is your depth of field. Now, this is a little on the techie side, but I have actually I had a really good example that I did not put into the slideshow where Josh had taken a picture or someone took a picture for Josh and it was supposed to be on the scale. Well, it actually missed focus and it was focused on the floor of the boat behind him. So while we could still read the scale, it wasn't what the picture was intended to be. Had whoever took that photo just taken another shot or two, they might have got it to, to work out. In this picture, this is some of my food photography that I've done, uh, what's actually in focus here is 
this plane or where these cookies are. What falls out of focus is everything behind it and in front of it. So the powdered sugar is losing its focus. The napkin behind it is losing its focus. Uh, but that draws you your eye into where you want it to look. <laughs> this is a picture of my lovely son, John, and I have the darndest time trying to get a picture of him without motion blur. He is almost two years old. He is constantly moving. If you're taking fish, a picture of a live fish, something you just caught, it's a 30 pound channel cat or blue cat or flathead, whatever it chances are that tail's trying to flop on you. He's trying to wrestle out of your arms. It, it's very, very possible to have some motion blur. Or if you're like me, I am not really good at and steady when it comes to holding something. I sometimes have a little bit of camera shake. So the biggest things that you can do to avoid that is add more light. If the camera, this is assuming you're using like an automatic setting, the camera has more light, then it will make the camera take the picture faster. In taking the picture faster, it's cutting down on how much blur can, can enter the picture. So again, using a faster shutter speed. If you need to switch it to an action mode on your camera, um, usually that is the... Um, if you look at the little dial on your camera in the camera settings, there's usually something that has like a picture of a person running. That would be your action mode. And it's made for a higher um, shutter speed. Slow your breathing. Uh, where this is probably most often taught is like if you're nervous or um, just unsteady, Take a deep breath, hold your breath if you need to, calm yourself down and try it again. And that should usually help you not be quite as shaky. Use something to steady yourself with. Um, if like I have a railing in front of me or something, I'll set my elbows or my arms up against that railing to help me steady myself. And that will help to get rid of any camera shake on my end to make sure that the photo turns out well and isn't blurry. And then just keep trying again. Nowadays, long gone are, are, are the days of, of film photography and we're doing everything digital now. Take the, take the picture, take an extra picture, take 10 pictures if you want to. You can always go back and delete them. But if you don't take the picture, you don't get the picture. All right. So look here. I took I took another shot with my little boy. It's not the exact same picture, but you know what? It was Christmas morning when I took this picture, and I still love it. All right. Something else to consider when we're doing fish photography is the weather. Um if you're any kind of a serious fisherman or maybe you're unlucky, you've dealt with rain, you've dealt with wind. Um, if you're going out in the summer, it can be incredibly hot. If you're brave and you like winter fishing, it can be incredibly cold. Um, I know winter blues is always a uh, good reminder of that one. <laughs> but with the sun, you have to think of it as it's going to give you light. It's going to give you shadows because everything that blocks the light obviously produces a shadow, but watch out for these shadows. Um, this could be depending on the angle of the sun. It could be shadows under the eyes. It could be under the brim of your hat. Um, these, aren't necessarily deal breakers, but if you're trying to get the best picture possible, watch out for little things like that. Watch for squinting. Um, you want to have a picture of whoever caught that awesome PB 
to be able to smile for the camera and to uh, to have a really memorable moment, a memorable photo for that. You, the last thing you really want is them for the bee staring directly into the sun, squinting and eyes watering. It's not a go good look on ev anybody. And well, it's just uncomfortable if you're the person having to squint into the sun. Keep an eye out for brightness and overexposure. If you are wearing white shirts, if um, your fish is lighter colored, sometimes that sunlight can be a little overbearing. And there's things you can do to shade the person or even just change your camera settings just a little bit to where it uh, will help with that brightness. Cloudy days. Um, I love photographing on cloudy days because you have a more even light. You don't have those harsh shadows and super bright lights. Um, I actually prefer this, which probably sounds counterintuitive to, to photography, but I do. So you have that lack of shadows because you have that even lighting. Um, so I don't have to worry about shadows under the eyes or under the brim of a cap. Um, but the drawback is a lot of things can blend in together. Um, I've got another example somewhere in my stuff of where Josh was doing fishing on the river on a cloudy day. And it's kind of a cold day anyway. So you have all the clouds in the sky and the water is reflecting that gray color and it's fall. So the trees are like already losing their leaves and it's just like one big picture of gray. So it's not a bad picture by any means, but it it's not the greatest picture it could be either. Rain. Rain is a pain in the rear for everybody, unless you just really, really like rain. Maybe you're a farmer. I don't know. But... <laughs> You got to get the frog togs out or an umbrella or um, if you're working with gear and you don't have it properly waterproofed, you got to protect it. Um, so protect your gear. Uh, if you've got a bimini top, get under the bimini top to take the photo. If um, if you've got an umbrella, hold, have someone hold an umbrella over you so you can take your photo. Um, hopefully you listen to the waterproofing lesson and have that taken care of, but you can also get rainwater on your lens. And sometimes it makes a really neat picture. Sometimes it's just annoying to have those water droplets in your picture. The wind is definitely not your friend when it comes to rain, because it, it's one thing for it to be raining down on you, but when it starts raining sideways, they're, they're, it's just miserable. Uh, again, wind. It's a blessing and a curse. Um, especially if it's a hot day, it's a wonderful thing to have a little bit of wind. But depending on how much wind you get, you have a lot more boat rock. You have wind in your hair. For a lot of you guys, probably not a concern. You're either wearing a ball cap or you're already bald or shaved your head or something. But for us ladies... When this thing whips you in the face or is trying to pull your hair across your face, it's annoying for the person in the picture, but it's also not going to make the best picture possible when you're distracted by your hair. <laughs> and it can also blow dust, dirt around. Um, it can get dust and dirt onto your lens. It can get it in your eyes, make you sneeze. Like I said, it's a blessing and a curse. Heat. So when I think of heat, I think of summer because this is where it's going to be most applicable. Um, if you guys are in more southern, warmer or humid climates, you guys know what I'm talking about. You've got to watch for your equipment. It is, it's easy to overheat your equipment, um, especially a phone if you're doing like live videos. Um, we have run into that. That's why Josh did his, um, uh, sh 
I don't think it was a short tip Saturday. I believe it was a, a regular full length video, but on doing the phone cooler, because when these things get overheated, they just shut down. You can't take any more photos. You can't take any more video. If you need to call for help, you can't do it. So keep an eye on them for overheating. Uh, one thing we have found is don't put it in a black case. I realize black is wonderful for not showing dirt and it's popular, but everybody has a black case on their phone. If you want to tell yours apart, get a different color, but also it will help a little bit with the overheating of your phone. Um, equipment can be hot to the touch, uh, especially if you have anything metal, metal tripod or something, um, some kind of clamp that holds things. So just to keep that general caution for yourself, you don't want to get hurt and watch for battery swelling. Um, if your battery swells, that battery is shot. Um, we've had a few different GoPro batteries do that um, over the years from excess use, extreme heat and temperatures, and just they've outlived their lifespan. Um, that's, I'm always cautious with my phones for that reason. Um, I don't like leaving my phone in my car, especially in summer months. Um, so if you're out on the boat, try to keep these out of the sunlight. Uh, that will help keep them cool and keep them from overheating. And then watch for condensation and fog on your, um, on your equipment and your camera lens. If you were just coming out of a cold environment, like you came out of the air conditioning and now you're going out in the sun, in the sun it can create a little bit of condensation with that hot and cold. It also does it in winter going from warm temperatures to cold temperatures. So if you're coming out of a warm car, warm truck, warm house, getting in the boat, going to the bank, it can create a little bit of condensation. Uh, another thing to consider with the cold is it actually can shorten your battery life. So whenever you are doing anything out for a long period of time, I would suggest having some kind of a charger or having um, extra batteries because the cold weather is, it's notorious for zapping your battery and um, shortening their life. And then another just pain in the butt whenever you have winter weather is gloves. Um, they make a lot of gloves that have those um, like metallic pads on the fingertips where you can still touch and use your phone. Um, but they don't work the greatest depending on what kind of a case you may have on your phone. They're kind of a pain in the butt, but necessary. And if you want the really, really warm gloves, you can forget using touch controls on a phone or something. So things to keep in mind for sure. Uh, last thing I wanted to talk about as far as weather goes is night. Uh, whenever you are doing a night thing, obviously you, you don't have that light that we talked about earlier. So you need to have some kind of light source. Um, we actually went last night and went fishing did a little bit of bank fishing. Josh brought a small, like 12 inch ring light. Um, I brought this little guy. Like I said, this thing was about $15 on Amazon and it, it puts out some light. Um, you could use a flashlight if that's all you've got with you. Um, I have at times, like whenever Josh and I are out together, I may use one of our phones as a flashlight and the other phone is taking the picture. So, um, have some kind of a light source. Maybe you need to have a flash or use the flash on your camera, but you got to have light to make the picture. If you are doing night photography, um, you may need a little bit of extra stabilization. Um, whenever you have less light, you need more time to take the picture. So a tripod is really handy here or being able to prop up your phone and, set it up somewhere where it doesn't shake and can't move that will allow it to have a nice clean crisp picture um without 
a bunch of blur from the shake. Uh, the more gear you bring, the more things that can go wrong. Um, that's kind of a general rule of thumb is the more stuff, the more options for things to not work out. Um, your phone battery could die. Your uh, didn't get a good charge on your light. So have backups if you want. Um, if you got a buddy with you, hopefully they've got a good charge on their phone. But definitely consider um, some of those options. And the last thing I'll say about night photography is it has a learning curve if you're trying to do flash photography. Um, flash is not necessarily an easy thing to master. If you're just using the flash that comes on your phone, you don't really get to change it up if it's too strong or not enough. Um, so it has a little bit of a learning curve to it. So let's talk about exposure on, on a photograph. Um, this is where things can either be too bright or too dark. While the picture of my daughter looks really, really good, and I love that picture of her, mostly because I'm a mom and that's my baby girl, and I love the look on her face because she was so excited in that moment catching that fish. But if you look closer at that fish, it's a little overexposed or blown out. That is a very light colored fish and as bright as the sun was on it, if I were to actually throw that picture into Photoshop, there's probably a lot of data loss on the white parts of that fish because it's just too bright. On the other end with the picture of my husband with his catfish, that flash or whatever he used, I'm assuming it's a flash of sorts, it might have been a constant light, but regardless, you have a lot of light on him and then it just falls off. And this is what we call where all the black around him is where it's underexposed or clipped. Again, you have a lot of data loss. I can throw that into Photoshop and try to bring back some of the extra stuff around him, but chances are it's not going to be pretty when I try to do that. So to do that, to fix that photo, we want to add more light around him. With her photo, we want to cut down a little bit of light. So by adding a little bit of shade, blocking the sun, something to help even that out. So there are basically three ways that you can light something. You can use natural light like the sun. You can use a flash or a constant light. Um, Lyle and Chad, are you guys still there? Let's see if they come back here. Yes, I am. All right. I have a question for you. Oh, you great. There was a test, man. Crap. <laughs> you were supposed to be prepared. <laughs> So I'm going to give you guys a, a guess here. And Josh, you're not allowed to because you know that, well, you might know the answer here. I want you guys to guess between these two photos, which one used a flash and which one used a constant light. Left is the constant light, right is the flash. Right is the flash. Okay. What makes you guys say that? I'm guessing. Just, Just the quality of the picture. No, honestly, I'm actually, if I'm really looking at it, I'd probably go back and say the maybe the opposite. But it's hard to tell because with a flash, you would think that there would be probably a little bit brighter at one point in that point in time, but I don't know. Well, you were actually correct on that, Chad. Um, because Can you say that again? You, you, for once, okay. you were correct. I was right. Just so everybody knows right now, that 100% of this time. changed your mind, so you was wrong, and I was right. You know, I said, looking at it again, though, you, you could make the distinction that it could be the opposite, just thinking of oh, you like that flash, no. you know. No. no. Right well, up. lights today, I mean, honestly, they, they've, they've gotten a lot better. The color quality of the light has gotten better, you know, having LEDs versus, you know, old tongues and light bulbs. So you don't LED have a lot of the same. Yes, LED is, is a game changer. I mean, I forgot how many LEDs are just in this little light alone. 
Um, and yeah, th so the picture on the left is with the constant light. The picture on the right is with a flash. The real way that you can kind of tell is the light goes a little farther on the flash because flash is generally a little bit more powerful. And if you were, if, if I zoomed in on Josh's eyes, you could see there's a little bit of a red eye there. But well, this tells me, though, I want to go with constant lighting because it makes your fish look bigger, too. <laughs> yeah, it's the same picture. I mean, same fish in both pictures, <laughs> just different lighting source. So, yeah, this yeah. is what we were doing last night was research. <laughs> I think Josh likes helping me with research projects now. <laughs> Great fish. <laughs> What was that about a 10 pound catfish last night? I was just shy of 11. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was, I couldn't remember 10 what, but yeah, 10, 10 pounds. Beautiful. Beautiful. So it was a good fish, and that's what about average for the for our, that lake? Yeah, around about that's. I mean, you hard pressed to catch one smaller than that on crab orchard. Yeah, there, there's some good fish in there. All right. All right, so back to the fun stuff. So where you place your light source can make a big difference in how your picture turns out. One place you can put it is you can place it behind you. While this can make for really interesting pictures with like sun glow behind you and separation, that's all techie stuff that us photographers do. Um, it can also create a lot of shadow. So if you look at this picture I took uh, over the weekend of Josh, you can see the sun is behind him. He is very dark. It's, it's hard to make out his facial features because the light just isn't on it. So the background looks pretty, but it's hard to see him. And, and maybe you boys like that picture. I don't know. The other place you can put it, you can put the light in front of you. Um, this is really good if you are by yourself. You see here. What are you doing over there, Lyle? <laughs> tell, tell people that he really is as big as he looks. <laughs> That's a five-pound fish. Josh is a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> so in having the, the the light source in front of him he doesn't blend into the background but everything is pretty well lit <laughs> oh. the bad thing about this is if you have a buddy helping you or anything else kind of between you and the sun or your light source, you can get some wicked shadows right across the subject. So in this case, Josh was taking a picture of this. I forgot. Asian what is that? Carp. That's an Asian carp. Okay. It's Asian carp. Yeah, okay. I, I've never caught one. I just only ever see their skeletal remains, I swear. Yeah, you're but, not um, missing <laughs> you have a really, really harsh shadow right across the fish um, because there was something between the light source and what we were taking the picture of. Yeah, I had the, uh, in, in that particular case, I had the camera, there's a handrail going down. This is next to a spillway. And I had the camera mounted to that handrail and the sun was setting. So that sun's hitting that handrail, throwing real good shadow. So in, in that case, yeah, there's ways we could have done a better picture. But when you're by yourself, you're kind of limited in how you can do the pictures. Because selfies are hard if you're not holding the camera. Another place you can put your light is to the side. So this would have avoided the picture of with, with Josh having the, the shadow right across the fish. Okay. But it doesn't necessarily always work out the best either because like in this picture with Josh and Steve Douglas, there is solidly light on one side of their face and the other side of their face is shadow. The shadows aren't horrible in this picture. It's not a deal breaker, but um, something to keep in mind depending on 
uh, how you want your picture to turn out. This is like the cream of the crop for professionals. We love 45 degree angles on our, our lighting sources. It creates a little bit of interesting um, shadow. You don't want to not have shadow because that's what creates depth and yeah. making us not look two dimensional. But it's not super harsh. You can tell that he has two sides to his face. 45 degrees is about perfect for most cases. However, if you guys can't get that because of your circumstances, don't worry about it. It's, it's not going to be a deal breaker. Again, this is my opinion, but hats are like the number one faux pas when it comes to shadows. I have constantly, I don't, I've, I've, I've lost count how many times I've had to ask gentlemen in even family portraits to either mm -hmm. fix their hat or take off their hat or something because everyone in the photo will be looking at the camera, smiling, looking really good. And then you have dark shadow here on that one person and it doesn't show them the way they're meant to be shown because the hat is blocking the light. But there is some things you can do so that you can have a better picture and keep your hat. One thing you, you can do is you can hat off. Oh, no. That is take the opposite. You can see this full, full sun. <laughs> but it is an option depending on, I don't know, maybe you have a wicked tan line you don't want to do that. I don't blame you. If, you were, if you're a hat wearer, you probably wear a hat all the time. I am not a hat wearer. That's just me. But you can turn it around if that's your style. That's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. But you can also tilt your hat slightly up. So, um, Rally so, kid. Yes. Not like, no, not, not, not like Billy Madison looking there. <laughs> 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 no just instead of having it you know down on your on your brim uh, on your forehead just bring it up just a little bit bring it up to your hairline you boys don't have a hairline but you know <laughs> <you're a> <laughs> i got mine on my hairline <laughs> Okay, where your hairline should be if you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It may feel really weird because that's not where you wear your hat, but the photo will turn out a little bit better because you won't have those harsh shadows underneath the brim of your hat. <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> All right, composition. <laughs> When we're doing fish photos, we want to show off that fish. It's up to you how big of a tail you want to tell. Whatever is closest to the camera will be bigger. So this is the same fish. It's a little bitty bass that we caught this weekend. <laughs> Josh caught it. And obviously when it's closer to the, the camera, it, I don't know that it looks more impressive, but... You may not be able to tell exactly how small it is, but it also makes his hands look a lot bigger. So, <laughs> again, what is closest to the camera will appear larger than it actually is. Use that however you want. <laughs> Perspective. Um, both of these make a really interesting picture. We do a lot of the pictures where we're holding the whole fish you can see it from you know nose to tail but whenever you change it up a little bit and put it where it's facing the camera it's still a really interesting picture uh, maybe that fish that you catch has an interesting facial feature or something about it show it off take the picture take the picture you can always delete it but you don't get Reminds another shot. Question mark on Danny Stone's fish. 
The question mark on Danny Stone's fish? Oh, his um, his um, his eyeball fish. He called eyeball, his eyeball yeah. cat. Yeah, it had a question mark oh. up there. Yeah. Okay, Very I forgot about that one. Very yeah. interesting and, and uh, well documented. And that's that was a great photo that he took. Of yeah, take extra pictures. Take all the pictures. Um, like I said, you can always delete them later if you don't need them, don't want that many. But you don't get another shot to take it. Right. It's kind of like deleting Dockery. So here we have two extremes again. I get opinion. Fill the frame. Let us know what you're taking the picture of. Let us see that fish. But on the other side, on the other one of, of Josh and just his one fish, I can't crop that. I cannot make that photo work for TikTok. I cannot make that photo work for Instagram. I cannot make that photo work for any other format because it is so close to the edges. Mm -hmm. There is no way to crop that photo without cutting off his hand or some part of the fish. So his. give yourself a little bit of space, but it doesn't have to be so far back that I have the whole scenery. Mm -hmm. Because when you're talking about fish pictures, I ain't looking at the trees in the background. I want to see the fish. Show me the fish. Um, so, but whenever you're doing this, and this is where um, I think Lyle is incorrect on pictures must only be done this direction. You can Rob, do it. I knew I love her. She you called me out. <laughs> Think, think of what you're going to use this photo for. <laughs> Picture frames go both directions. If you're going to use TikTok, it's got to be this direction. If you're going to do a reel, it's got to go this direction. If you're going to do it on Facebook, Facebook, don't give a darn. Uh, Instagram, it's going to be a square. Um, so keep those things in mind when you're taking the picture. Because, like I said... On the picture of Josh and, and the really nice blue cat, I can't crop that. I cannot make that work for anything other than just Facebook because it's so close to the edges. I can zoom in on the other one. It may not have the best quality zooming in on it, but I can. So just things to keep in mind whenever you're taking the picture. If you need to, get closer step back a lot of times i use a camera that does not have a zoom i am the zoom i have to step forward i have to step back um just do what you need to do so that you can get pictures and if you need to edit it later you can edit it later you have that option all right camera angle i may i may ruffle some feathers here but an upward angle doesn't flatter anybody. Remember what I said earlier? Whatever is closest yeah. to the camera is larger than it appears. Uh -huh. Most of us carry a lot of our weight in our midsection or on our lower half of our body. It's not flattering to make that any bigger than it already is. I agree. I will say, to me, an upward angle is a fatter angle. <laughs> But this is the ladies I'm going to talk to on this one because they're the number one offenders on this one. The downward angle where you've probably seen the bathroom selfies where the, the girl is holding the camera up here. Yes, your body is further away from the camera. Yes, it looks smaller. It's been done to death. It's outdated. We just want to see you. Just be you. The best camera angle is going to be right here on the same field, the same playing field. Does not have to be up, does not have to be down. Keep it even. Now it's a little harder taking pictures of Josh since he's taller, but it can be done. And since I'm not going to pick on just the ladies on this one, guys, I got one for you too. We don't want a crotch shot. Here if we go. Sitting, Lies. If you're sitting, please don't 
sit with your legs to the camera. Turn a little bit. If you're wearing shorts, dear God, please turn a little bit. Mm -mm. We're, we're, we're taking pictures of fish, not baby birdies. You're right, Josh. I missed that because I don't have you guys on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I was pointing at dad. I had He's a feeling. I would never. I would never. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys will probably uh, agree with me on this tip, but a big thing to keep in mind whatever we are dealing with living fish work fast fish need water they need water for their health so you caught the fish you've got them out of the net you're taking the picture yes take all the pictures take a few extras but do this quickly and get that fish back in the water preserve that fish's life don't you're doing something because I can't see you, aren't you? No. No, I was laughing at Sean T. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to you laughing at me. <laughs> no. But get the fish back in the water. You know, we we we're we're all about conservation in, in this this sport, and you're not doing the fish any favors by keeping it out of the water that much longer. Get it back in water. <laughs> so, like I said, get, get the fish back in the water as quickly as possible. A living fish photographs much better than a dead fish. Um, if you look at the eyes, it will tell you whether that fish is living or not. It will show through in the photograph. If you're taking a picture of all the fish you caught that day, it is what it is. But... If you're doing a PB, a living fish looks much better in a picture than a, than a dead one. You've maybe heard this saying, slow is fast. So doing things and doing them more often, practicing, will eventually get you to where you are, are faster at doing this stuff and getting the fish back in the water. Um, I thoroughly suggest practicing the things we've discussed tonight before you get on the boat, before you go bank fishing, when you don't have a fish, because the time to practice and take, change all the different camera settings, if you don't know how to use your camera, the time to learn it is not right then and there on the spot. The time to learn it is before you go. Practice. And if you have to read the manual, read the manual. If you have to Google it, Google it. But learn what options you have available to you. Guys don't would, read manuals. Do what? Guys <laughs> don't read manuals. <laughs> okay, I'm bad about reading manuals too. I don't do it. But if I have a question, <laughs> I will look something up. <laughs> if you are alone, use a tripod. Um, tripods are cheap. You can get one for like 20 bucks at Walmart. Um, maybe even cheaper than that. Chances are you've got one somewhere. And it doesn't have to be a full-length tripod. Um, I know, like, the one we were using last night at uh, the, the lake, Josh had a ring light on that tripod and a mount for his phone so that he could take the phone and hold it up in that spot as well. Um, so use a phone mount. Find something to prop up your phone. And it will help you get a nice steady picture and if you change it to the front facing camera usually your rear facing camera is the better quality but change it to the front facing camera so that you know what's in the picture is what you want in the picture also check your phone settings um, this is going to be different for different types of phones and um, different whether you have Apple or if you have Android or whatever you have, but check your phone settings. Um, I have Android. And if I go into my camera setting here, uh, if we go to settings, 
and then I go all the way down to shooting methods, I can turn on voice commands or I can do where I can show my palm to the camera. Um, I know Josh will use these commands quite often when he's by himself. If you have it set up to do so, all you have to do is show your palm to the camera and it will take the picture. Has um, to be for, the palm, right? uh, for, for that setting, yes, it has to be the palm. Um, it can also do voice commands if you have it turned on where you can say smile or cheese or take picture um, and it will it will do that for you. Um, because how often do you get people together and go say cheese? Well, you've just triggered the camera to take the photo. So it's it's that easy. So if you don't have the hands to take the picture because you're holding the fish, you can get the phone to take the picture for you. Um, some cameras and some phones have an option to do where you just smile at the camera and it will detect your, your smile and take the photo. Mine does not have that setting. Um, I think previous phones that I had did have that setting. So just check your phone um, and, or your camera settings and see what options it has available. But these do come in really handy when you're by yourself. All right, that's the biggest portion of photography we're gonna, we're we're going to talk about. I know that was a lot of information, but we'll briefly talk about post processing. And by post processing, I mean editing. There is Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. I use both of these religiously for editing photographs. Um, these are not user friendly programs. Anything made by Adobe is not a user-friendly program. Um, they are really good programs, but they, they, they take a lot of learning to um, master them. And while I may be really good at certain things, I don't consider myself a master of these two programs. There's a lot of really good phone apps that will let you do some things um, to edit your photographs, like directly in that app or even within your own phone's um, gallery app. They'll have a lot of um, different editing things, filters. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, um, color, whatever you need to do. A lot of phone apps will do that. Uh, if you are uploading your pictures to Facebook or Instagram, a lot of them have filters available that you can add to your photos as you're uploading them. Um, black and white filters are really cool. I, I do use those from time to time. Beyond that, I don't use a lot of filters. Just personal preference. I'm not a big fan of them. Um, but there are many, many, many programs out there. Different free softwares. Um, I know I've been using here lately. Um, oh, was it Photopia? Photopia, whatever. Um, it's a free software, uh, internet based thing. It's just kind of like Photoshop. Um, but again, it has a learning curve cause it's just like Photoshop, but it's free. So there are lots of different options out there. If you want to learn how to edit your photographs, the probably last thing I'm going to, I'm going to talk about is if you are going to edit your photographs, um, there's lots of different things you can, can edit in them you can even make chad beautiful but really? really oh i've got i've got some i've got some good stuff uh white balance is also going to be a really important thing uh depending on when and where you're taking your photo this can happen in the highest quality camera a lot of times we'll use an automatic white balance, but it's computer thinking for you and it's not always going to get it right. In the picture of Josh with the fish, um, that has a blue color cast because it was done on a cloudy day in winter. The picture of his dad holding his fish, that is done with green trees and green water and that green color cast, just it, it just hangs out onto everything in the picture because that green light is being reflected. The picture of my daughter with the little snake 
it was done at sunset. So you have a much warmer temperature in that picture. It's, it's kind of red and a little bit of yellow. All that can be fixed with a simple editing software to fix the white balance. That's not going to make or break a photo. Uh, maybe you really like it like that. I don't know, but that's pretty much all I had for you guys. If you guys have specific questions, like, your specific model of camera or um, something like that, I will do my best to help you out, but feel free to email me. Here's my email address, Christina Dunnigan photographer at gmail.com. Um, but beyond that, I'm ready to open up the floor to other questions. What a great job you done. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Yeah, really good job. There's a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not one of those me. people that just likes to talk and talk and talk. <laughs> <laughs> I like feedback, so this was definitely um, a different way of teaching for me. <laughs> now I think you you did you answered a couple questions I already had, especially about angles and you know, especially the the, the lighting where you know that 45 versus you know, making sure. One way it drowns you out, the other. That made that that was great to hear. But one question I do maybe have is a good way to keep your lenses clean. Do, do you just have a regular hmm. cloth that you keep, or how often? Do you uh, yeah, I do? do keep a lens cloth in my bag at all times because dust happens. Um, if it especially is really dusty or really dirty, those little um, wet eyeglass wipes that you can get at Walmart are amazing for that. I use those and then you can use a dry, um, yep, a dry uh, lens cloth afterwards just to make sure there's no lint or anything left behind. And a t-shirt is not a substitute for a lens cloth. I I'm bad about that. it. I do yeah. it too because it's what you got on you, but you can actually scratch your lens that way um, depending on if something's on your shirt or what kind of fibers it's made out of. So try to use a lens cloth every time. Yeah. Uh, See, Evan <laughs> says if you have a cell phone that takes great bio illuminate light, like moonlight, is that still a good thing? Bio illuminate light. I, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning a scene from Moana in my, my, uh, <laughs> my head now but the bioluminescent algae but uh, <laughs> now um a lot of phones have a night mode which is really good however it has its limitations um i actually did a, a picture last night of john in josh's lap and i used the night mode on it i got a neat picture but it is definitely not of a good quality because of just how dark it was. It does need some light to really make it be a good picture. That's why you, you need to have, or know what all your options are and have options available. I have a couple of questions, Christina. Shoot, the first one is, can you recommend a quality camera mount to fit on a tripod for phones? I don't have a specific one, but I know Josh probably does because he does more of that stuff um, as far as phone mounted stuff because of, of his YouTube. Um, I know you've taken, you found some that are just absolute junk and some that are, are better. I would there definitely pay a, attention to reviews on those. It is a, it's like flipping a coin whenever you buy one because you don't know whether you're going to get a junk one or not. The one that I got, I got it, my favorite one, I got it at Walmart for like $5. And uh, I've never been able to find it again. And instead of just being spring loaded and, and pulling apart and you stick your phone in there, this one has two little jaws. You put your phone in and it's got a threaded rod. And you turn That's that knob, well, you can lock that thing in there. That phone ain't falling out. And uh, That's the kind we all need. And you can, you can find it. Is, your... Go ahead. The other thing is, how much can you fix photos with Photoshop or a program like that? 
you can do amazing things with Photoshop. Seriously, I can completely take out a background. I can swap heads. I have done that before for weddings when I had little flower girls that didn't want to look at the camera in one picture and did in the other one. I, I could, I, I told you, I could make, I could make Chad pretty. <laughs> <laughs> they, there's a lot you can do. However, the those are very, very advanced techniques for some things. Um, if you're looking to just do basic stuff, and yes, Manfrotto is a very good tripod. It is a very high quality. <laughs> yes. um, they are a very little bit good. pricier. So just keep that in mind. But they are very yes. good quality. They will last you forever. The cheapy yes. ones from Walmart will get the job done, but they won't last. Well, Walmart uh, does offer a heavier duty one than, than just a standard one they sell. And it's, it's not a Manfrotto, but it's better quality than the cheap ones. Yeah, I think the one I use professionally is like a Mi Photo, which is like a knockoff of the Manfrotto because it was a little bit cheaper, but it's still a really good, um, solid tripod. It's very lightweight, but it's aluminum, and uh, it's it travels well. It folds up really, really tiny. I've, I've taken it on carry-ons on my luggage before, and if you need a little bit of weight because you're outdoors and you're in the wind carry a Ziploc bag with you because you can put some water in that Ziploc bag. You can put some rocks in that Ziploc bag. And if you've ever noticed on the bottom of your tripod, there's usually a little hook. <laughs> hook that on there and it's going to hold your tripod in place. Huh. Okay. I actually have a, I actually have a bag full of number seven shot that you reload mm -hmm. shotgun shells mm -hmm. with that I lay over top of a tripod to keep them from moving around. Throw a few lead weights in, in that Ziploc bag. Like mm -hmm. I said, get a few rocks. Um, sand works great. Water works great. Just hang it from that little hook on the bottom, and that tripod ain't going nowhere. You can also use Velcro if you have a carpeted floor. Mm-hmm. But... That would work it's in not a boat, as good as maybe, but it's not going to work on it, it, it it a substitute. But it's not as good as weight. Weight fixes a lot of things. <laughs> Any other questions for Christina while we have her on here? <sighs> Mine are super technical because I'm like so far advanced already. <laughs> here we go. Chad sees like equations on the board and he just solves them in his head. Yeah. I mean, there he does. The one movie where the janitor <laughs> does that one equation that nobody could ever do. That that was based off me. <laughs> I absolutely enjoyed this, Christina. I thought you'd done a <laughs> magnific magnificent job. Thank you. And, and without getting so technical that people could still understand what you were saying. Because when you go to talking about luminous of lights and how powerful they are and what color of the light is, you can get over people's heads really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. But the serious, the serious photographers need to know that. Weight fixes everything. That's why they call me. <laughs> I like it. But, but you know, you can, and you get, you kept it down to a level where everybody could understand what you was talking about. And man, it, was, it was a great presentation, and people should have learned a lot. And the thing about it is, if you if you didn't learn, you can go back and watch this as many times as you want to till you pick it up. And then if you still don't get it, you can just send her a message. <laughs> I'm happy to there answer any go. questions that come up later. Like I said, a lot of questions re related to photography are going to be very specific to what you're using, whether it's phone, camera, whatever. Um, yeah, something I didn't include on here, but if you are using a waterproof camera, a GoPro, um, something like this, or uh, have a waterproof case on your phone, if it does get wet, do not open it until it is dry and i mean dry dry not like you dried it off with a towel because if any water gets into that port it's mm -hmm. never going to be quite the same again 
So you know, definitely Rome and Rice give it time hold. to dry. Because I think like the instruction manual on this little camera that I take with me on vacations, it said don't open it for two hours. Yeah. Wow. Because it wants to be absolutely dry before you open that up to get your SD card out of it or your battery. Okay. Just watch. So, yeah. Good deal. And I am very impressed with the Manny over there taking care of my son. <laughs> He's done very good. He's been, he's been playing on. Bubble Pop. He's been watching Bluey. We've watched uh, Skeletons on Tee Town. And a little bit of everything going on over here. So. I've been impressed. Well, <laughs> it really has been a great show tonight, Christina. And thank you so much for coming over here. I know you put a lot of time in uh, to make this presentation uh, like you did. And, and it showed it was very well done and, and well, thank uh, you like i say the, the fact that people can message you you give them your email so they can message you uh, after the fact if they don't get it or or need heavier duty information uh maybe they're into it a little deeper and you'll know when they ask the question if, if they're more than a novice you know I don't claim to know all the answers, but if I don't know it, I'll definitely do my best to point you in the right direction. That's all. Uh, a good camera for a beginner, someone who's rough on equipment. I I don't know if they make them anymore. I'd have to I'd have to research it. But there used to be a point and shoot camera series called the Tough series. I had a couple of these um, through the years before I got this one, and it was good for camera drops up to like 10 feet, and it could go 20 foot under the water. They are really heavy duty, rugged little point. Yes, little point and shoot cameras. <laughs> They're easy to throw in your pocket, throw in your uh, gear bag. Um, look for your shock rating, um, drop protection, something like that on your your review listings. And um, those are definitely something you want if you're hard on equipment. Josh, Chad. <laughs> all right. I got my phone back is all I got to say. I got mine back. That was sheer Chad, determination. You, <laughs> that was Irish, Irish stubbornness right there. Read so. between the lines, Josh. <laughs> Emojis are flying. Yep. That's right, Danny. Great job. And, and expected just to, you got what you expected with Christine. You knew it'd be awesome. And, and it was. And, and uh, Christine, I can't thank you enough. I hope they don't flood you with questions, but I know if you get a bunch of them, you'll be able to answer them. I was just hoping no one went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, People need to, if, if they're in this for the long haul, like a lot of people are, or they think they are, they need to learn how to do it right. And this is learning mm -hmm. how to do it right. So I, I find, found this a very interesting topic. I hope everyone else did. Uh, but like I say, we have a open door policy. If people have suggestions for us on content they want to see on our show, send us a message. You can leave in a comment below any show. I read every comment and try to answer every one. Now, some of them uh, may get missed, but I'd be surprised if it was any of that number. So if you have something else that you'd like to see, just let us know. Or message Chad or Josh or myself, and we'll be happy to do it. Uh, but like I say, I thought Christina done a bang-up job tonight, and I learned a lot from her. Yeah. Uh, and she didn't get so deep in it that it would go over my head, which can happen very easy. Doesn't have far to go to go over his head. <laughs> well, she's talking about hairline, though. The three of us are in trouble, buds. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's why I'm moving my head. You know, I was not <laughs> considering my hair. audience on that question. <laughs> you, you went right over a zoom, bing, bang, boom, gone to the moon. <laughs> I was not I was not thinking about you guys running with that one. <laughs> and the best part was when she told Lyle he was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit taken by that. But it's okay. Because I know she's probably right. 
All Sad right. though. Yeah. Definitely, he's already it. already getting some good feedback. So, yeah, that's exactly right. Josh, what do we have tonight for? Uh, before we close out, we got a bragging board. You ready for it? That's what I'm talking about right there. Let's do it to it. Here we go. Let's do it. Howdy, folks. It's time once again to take a look at the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board for the week of May 21st, 2023. First up, we have Miss Stephanie Cluck with a 17.3 pound channel cat. That's a new personal best caught up at Lake Mendota, Wisconsin. Congratulations, Stephanie. Next up, we have Brandon Cross with a 21.15 pound Lake Mendota channel catfish. Are you guys starting to see a pattern here? And Brandon's wife Betty with a 24.09 pound Lake Mendota channel cat. That's one heck of a fish. Congratulations, Betty. Our good buddy James Dockery sent a picture in of his daughter Jolene. She took first place at the 40th Annual Bass and Kids Fishing Tournament. Congratulations Jolene, great job. And Jeremy DeFore, Creole catfishing with these three flathead catfish he caught while bank fishing and a couple of 12 inch shell cracker cooked up Creole style. Don't forget that you too can be featured on the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board. To be eligible, the fish must have been caught within the past 14 days. We accept pictures of any species of fish. All you have to do is send the information listed on your screen to pics at theweekendangler.com. Be sure to attach a photograph of your fish. We'll get it on the Catfish Weekly Bragging Board. Thank you all for watching. Have a great week. Bravo. Great job. Some nice Great fish job. this week. Nice fish this week. I was digging yes. the tasty looking ones on Jeremy's plate. <laughs> I know. I that you know, he sent me that this this afternoon. I was like, man, those look good. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And those are the right size to think. Selective harvest is the big thing to all of us, as as most people know. And the, the fish that he was cooking up, it was not giant, it was small eating size fish and uh Cat uh, flatheads are the king of cats, but the small ones, man, they taste so good. They really I was do. very tempted to to keep my my first ever Mississippi catfish. It was this past weekend, a full five about a five pound flathead, man. And it, I was like, man, I bet that you'd have been closer to really home and been different too. <laughs> yeah, you could have dropped it off here on your way through. Absolutely. Hey, you guys got any? Things to close out with before we go, so we can let Mark have his get his show well, started. Mark, yeah, Mark's Mark already started. So uh, everybody, head over and uh, check out Catfish and Crappie. He's got mm -hmm. Freddie on there tonight. They've started about uh, ten minutes, ten minutes ago, fifteen minutes ago, something like that. So, and then we'll we'll see you guys Thursday night, where I will be taking on Freddie one on one for one hour. Oh boy! To so. Well, thank everybody for watching Catch Weekly tonight. We appreciate all you guys in chat and all your comments. If you have any questions for us, please leave it in the description below the description uh, in the videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week right here on Catch Weekly. Christina, thank you so much. Thanks for having yeah, me. Thank you, Christina. It was a great job. Yeah.